guys, my name is Stuart. Uh, hey, it's Stuart. There we go. Product placement. How are you doing today? And if no one's told you, damn, you look sexy. Those nose hairs are amazing. I just have this idea that you're literally looking at your phone like this. Mm. Oh gosh, I just showed my nose hairs there. <laughs> anyway, how are we doing, guys? If you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe. If this is your first time here, thank you for joining us. Why? If you're coming back, thank you for coming back. Why? I'm joking. I'm not gonna let you go. Cause I'd find you. <laughs> Please like, comment, subscribe, smash those buttons, write a comment in the comment section. All of that helps us in this world of YouTube. We're about to go into a review for Emily, the new biopic based on Emily Bronte, the directorial debut of Francis O'Connor. And guys, um, you can you can leave the vlog after this. Go see it. It is <laughs> just go see it. This is probably one of the best movies I have seen this year. I cried. I ugly man cried and I was happy. So myself and Jordan got the opportunity to go see Emily's premiere in Ireland. It was an amazing event. We had a lot of fun, a lot of deep intellectual discussions around the movie. Jordan made a few points. I'm not going to name them just, you know, in case of spoilers, but I, I do not believe them. One hot. Oh crap. Maybe I do. So the fact I can, so the fact I can actually say I read Wuthering Heights is reason enough for this movie. Oh yeah, me, yeah, I just I just read Wuthering Heights for fun. I'm that guy now. Actually, side note, away from the movie, I did read Wuthering Heights just to try and get the concept of who Emily Bronte was in terms of her writing. This came from Diana. Thank you very much, my dear. I love the book. An, an exceptionally hard read. The fact that it's required reading in some schools is beyond me because I probably couldn't have comprehended this at 16, 17. This is one to just add to your bucket list. 100 books to read before you die. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Okay, and let's get into the review. I was gonna throw the book, but then I'm, I'm not throwing that book. You can stay there. This is my introduction to not only Frances O'Connor, but also Emma Mackey. And just just for the record, um, I'm not, we're not related. I checked. Okay, so this has been a passion project of Frances O'Connor for many, many years. It's her first, it's her directorial debut, and by God, it, it was immaculate. It was beautiful. This movie moved me to tears. And when I say tears, I mean I was in the cinema. I took front row center to try and catch everything. There was so much. There was so much emotion through the characters. There was so much symbolism in the scenes. And the cinematography was jaw-dropping. There was so much packed into this two-hour film. I, I, I couldn't contain myself. At the height of emotional acts in the piece, Tears were flowing, and I was happy to say that afterwards. I was like, I couldn't stop crying. The interesting thing about it is that even though it is like a biopic, it, it, it comes from the imagination of not only Francis O'Connor, but the writings of Emily Bronte. There's very little actually known about the Bronte sisters, even though she's like one of the greatest writers in English history, in, in the world classification. Like she is up there with Shakespeare. Read it. There is very little known about the actual Bronte sisters themselves and Charlotte and Emily, even though they are some of the most prominent writers in not only like English literature, but the world. Like Emily Bronte and her work is compared to that of Shakespeare and Gautier and Ibsen. And yet there's very little known about them themselves. And even if you look on their history, if you were to like look them up, they were very secluded. And then it actually comes to like their origin stories of how they became such prominent writers is is very much divided down the middle that were they suppressed and did this come from imagination and trauma within themselves their great pieces of work or were they for lack of a better and crude word manufactured um you know highly educated and actually just plagiarizing other works into their own fabrications children very little nowadays that you can say isn't you know uh isn't you know a deviation of some other story look up look up Joseph. Look up Joseph Campbell's uh, Here with a Thousand Faces. There's really only six major plots. I literally put up seven hands, but still. Itself is a biopic on Emily Bronte's uh, whirlwind, tumultuous relationship on... Tumultuous... Tumultuous... Tumultuous relationship. A lover, her family, and also how she began to write, or in this case, how she ended writing. Keep that in mind. Remember? Crying a lot. Essentially, without giving away too many spoilers, this movie will follow the life of a secluded wallflower who not only becomes more aware of herself um, intellectually, spiritually, and sexually, but also trying to fight in a world of patriarchy. There is a lot of reflection 
to go back on, you know, women of the period. Because there's certain moments when even the matriarchy fights with each other. One that has conformed to society's standards and one that isn't breaking away from the norm, but just trying to be independent and be their own uh, and be their own entity. Here's the question I'm going to pose to you. What if you were an intellectual vastly more intelligent than everyone else in the room, but you would conform and make everyone else feel superior? You're going to go one of two ways, and this is what happened in this movie. And this is a major relationship between two of the sisters. What I would like to say is don't expect too much of um, fact in this movie. It is the imagination of Frances O'Connor. You have all the beauty, the grandeur of Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> and then you have the sex of Bridgerton. <laughs> That's the only way I could put it. There was a lot of sex. I'm happy they didn't shy away from it. That came out wrong. I'm happy they showed the exploration. The raw and the pain in the relationship was gut-wrecking, to say the least, between Emily and someone. There was also other moments in the movie that had me question um, her relationship with family and other friends and the external world that was greatly and often put to me by Jordan. You could see the moments where O'Connor did say, this is going to be an introduction to how Emily came up with the idea of Wuthering Heights. There were certain scenes peppered around the place that were like, oh, this goes back to this moment. This is Heathcliff, this is Catherine, this is the son, the daughter, etc." An amazing scene between Catherine, Anne and Emily. I'm not, I won't spoil it. This movie was absolutely gorgeous. Five out of five, 10 out of 10. Happily watch it. Like this is one to watch for award season. Um, if you do get the opportunity, like this is one movie I would implore you to go see. It's, it's a piece of art in itself. And I don't say that about many movies. This is probably one of the best movies I've watched this year. Like a massive thank you to Warner Brothers for the opportunity to go see the movie. Anyway guys, that is the end of the review. Nice, quick, snappy, and simple. Francis O'Connor's movie, Emily, based on Emily Bronte, author of Wuthering Heights. Go see it. Like, go. I, 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 I know, I know that you're thinking, ah, oh, I won't go see it. Go see it. I tried to crack my knuckles, they won't crack. <laughs>